On this episode of Function Beast, there's one dent in this quarter panel, so all of it must go. Perfectly yeah. fine S13 yeah. uh, and replacing everything that's beautiful about it with fiberglass. <laughs> with ugly fiberglass. Um, and it's going to hurt me so much that I can't be here when the car is actually getting cut up um, because it will destroy my soul. But yeah, uh, this is like a pretty nice 240 and we're gonna ruin it. Oh look, there's, there's paint chips here, so it's fine to cut it. See, 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 look crack so it's it's acceptable it's okay <sighs> so like you gotta take the side skirts off so <laughs> cut the zip ties off and take the one screw out that's how you take a side skirt off take the one screw out that you drilled into the car and then cut zip ties because zip ties just do everything with zip ties. Not because you're lazy, but because you're lazy, but also because when you run over a bunch of rumble strips of Pocono, the side skirt will just fall off and won't explode into a jillion pieces. First, mark your drill holes on the fender using a non-branded silver permanent marker. Can I get an M4 in a little bit? Yeah, it's a box of things. Yeah, I was gonna say, so, uh, DeWalt here, DeWalt, uh, <laughs> did something pretty cool because all the drill bits are of course in standard, um, but if you look on the back here, we have their equivalents. So, you know, uh, a 3 16th is 4.8 mil, that sort of thing. Um, so we should probably go with like a 15 64th, 6 mil, just to give a little extra space so you're not jamming it through the fiberglass. 15 64ths. Which, of course, is going to be missing. Sponsor us, DeWalt. I can find a 1564th. We, we both, conveniently enough, only use DeWalt stuff. <laughs> that's like kind of true. The only thing I have that's Milwaukee still is the chop saw. The, um, what's it called? The, uh, basically, I used to have all Milwaukee stuff, and then it all, like, you know, over time broke. Uh, and then when I went to buy stuff, I just bought DeWalt stuff, except for this. This thing's still around. It just won't die. But like, yeah. Everything else is like DeWalt. Except... Ah, don't, look, don't, don't look at the Ryobi thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's okay, so maybe we lied. Almost everything is DeWalt. Yeah, no, but all, like, all of my tools are DeWalt. Like my impact guns and stuff, they're, they're all DeWalt. Yeah, that's what mine they, like They work real good. Go, like Team Yellow. Who's, I say who's, for me, it's literally just one of those things where um, the you know the Dewalt stuff just never like never broke. Like you know what I mean? Like that's all. I bought it. It just hasn't broken. Sponsor us, Dewalt. We're really good at product placement. <laughs> now you can start drilling out your fender. Just got back from the hardware store where we spent. $30 on uh, all these little button head screw guys. Uh, the deal is these are going into the, uh, the thread starts and we chose like the button head hex head things because they kind of look like ribbons. Um, so that you may not be able to tell the difference, but um, it would make the fender uh, removable so we could take it off, swap out a new one when it gets destroyed the whole nine yards and it would just be a wham bam thank you bam type thing. Alright, so the first thing we do here, which you probably can't see because it's looking like but now that I have this thing sorted in place, I'm going to mark out where this top quarter hole is going to be. Right there. Um, for it to be drilled and thread-serted because these fenders are 
so flat, they don't really conform to the body. Like literally tape just rips right off. So it's not like that we could just tape it on to mark the holes or something. But they're like, you know, they're pretty flexible. So once we actually have them tied down, it will work. But for now, um, we're gonna have to do it one at a time probably. So yeah, so my drill bit doesn't uh, walk all over the place. I'll uh, do this, which leaves us a nice little divot there for the uh, drill bit to ride in. And I picked this drill bit completely by eye. I do not know if it's the right size at all, but we'll find out shortly. I also don't know what's underneath this metal here, so I could run into a wiring harness for all right now. You know, you make me feel real confident. No, I don't believe in lying. Of course it's hot. <laughs> so that's a hole. Don't scratch the paint. Look, a hole. Now that hole. Get this thread, sir. I'll see if it fits. If it's pretty close. Um, I might even have to go up a bit size, um, but we'll see right now. You can't really tell until you have it on the machine. So. What I'm gonna do is press this in if I can. Which it looks like it's not, it looks like I have to go up a drill bit size. So, we've gone up a drill bit size, which should be, you know, slightly larger, nothing crazy. Kind of doing that pulse so that it doesn't start flying all over the place, which is what will happen. It'll catch on you and fly. Right now, just like a ribbon gun, give me one of those. You have to drill out all the rivets, but with this, you just put that in and out. So we added threads to sheet metal. That's basically the deal. And these M5 cap head, or what are they called? Button head, right? Button heads, yeah. They're the button head. Uh, these ones are stainless, so they don't get all rusty on the outside of your car, which is what will happen if you use the regular ones. Um, Flawless. Yeah. The, uh, so these M5 uh, button head Allen bolts or hex bolts or whatever. Uh, they look like rivets from like a foot away. You can't, you have to really, really get in there to know that that's not a rivet. It's not all the way tight, but it's holding in place. And that, that looks like a rivet? You never know. Like, you have to get real close to tell that it's not. Um, and like I said, for me, the benefit of it being a removable item is It'd be hard to outweigh that to me. At this point, you can begin drilling out the chassis and adding the thread certs. Be very careful with this and make sure you're doing it correctly because there are no do-overs. With every few thread certs that you add, it's important to continuously check fitment of the fender to make sure that it's going on properly. is to keep it from wandering and also keep it cool you know gives it a second to uh for the, the heat to spread because there's all sorts of things that can happen where you uh you know you put too much heat into the panel and it warps um you know like you're, you're drilling into it and you actually make a big dent because you're pressing too hard all, all that stuff that you don't really you don't really want to do any of that but he's like some crazy heavy duty drill in there. The, uh, don't use like <laughs> concrete drill. The cordless Dewalt is the perfect one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, just, you, you really don't need like crazy those high power drills. Like this is 
gritty, you know, thin sheet metal. But what I do recommend is getting good bits though. Which are also produced by DeWalt. <laughs> With all the thread certs installed, you can check final fitment. So what we're doing now is uh, I'm going to tape off the chassis um, around the wheel well. That'll make it easier to mark and um, you know cut when when it comes time to cut it. Uh, so yeah, so right now I'm just gonna tape up the general area. Nothing's too specific because we don't actually know where we're cutting yet, but. I'm gonna start it somewhere around up here and end it somewhere around there. Once you're finished taping, use a wheel to mark your cut. There's gonna be sparks flying all over. <laughs> what I was saying was, uh, if you were at home, you're probably not going to cut it that well and that quickly in one shot, but I've done this many, many times, so I am accustomed to it. So here we go. Once the metal has been welded and grinded, seam sealer must be added to protect the bare metal. What you should do is tape the car up with paper so that you have a surface to spray against so you're not getting it everywhere. It's important to remember to do not only the outside of the fender, but the inside as well. Remove your tape and reinstall the fender for the final time. You know, I feel like she
Good evening, ladies and jelly beans. What we're going to be doing tonight is taking the shitty factory control arms off of Princess Bubblegum and replacing them with Godspeed ones because money is a real thing. So remember that. Uh, buy Godspeed because it's cheap. Begin by removing the factory control arms. I started with the toe arm. Tonight, but this car is not getting aligned tonight. And I see where you're, where you think I'm going with this. So, what's uh, what we're actually oh, going? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going home crooked. Um, so what what I'm gonna be doing is basically just making each arm kind of be approximately factory length, putting it on the car, and then I'm gonna line it tomorrow. Well, I'm not gonna line it tomorrow. Okay, let's gonna line it tomorrow. To make the process easier, it's best to support the knuckle. I used a jack with a 4x4 on it. This prevents the bolts from binding when you're trying to remove them. Some of the bolts will probably be difficult to undo. Most of them probably haven't moved in 20 plus years. So this is long. We're gonna make this the same amount of long. They're almost already the same amount of long. This has this bend in it too, right here. This bend, that's for mad low. So you can get extra low. Um, it's, it's just the, the bend to allow the knuckle to sit a little bit lower. For reasons. It helps the geometry out a bit, which is fine, because I failed math. That's the one with shapes, right? So what I'm doing is taking the arm, arm taking the arm apart so that I can just anti-seize the stuff. Because hopefully one day I can take it all back apart again. That would be good. Ideal. So when you do the anti-seeks, all you have to do is take a, a little bit, just apparently uh, a little dab will do you, just kind of like that, uh, just get it all, get it all on there. That's probably uh, plenty, and then you just smooth it out with the nut. Uh, on the other side, I put on way too much. So <laughs> don't forget that little weird wavy crush washer. That helps. To put it on the wrong side. Helps if you put it on the right side. Do that, put it on the right side. Nut goes on. And then it'll just, as you work it down, as you work it down the shaft, the nut will spread all of the creamy juice to all of the threads. God damn it, I will not let you defeat me. It helps if you turn it the right way. These are, one side is right hand thread, one side is left hand thread, which is what you want in a, a control arm package. The ones that are both like right hand threads, uh, those suck and avoid them. Uh, you want like the, the right hand, left hand thread so that you can just turn the turnbuckle in the center uh, when you go to align the car that makes everything so easy. So you don't have to disconnect one side, measure it out, reconnect it. That's just a goddamn nightmare. And uh, the companies that make dual right hand thread control arms are literally agents of safety. So. 
just the tip top tip. Um, because these Godspeed arms are the circle kind that go around the coil holder, you have to take the coil over on first. Um, and don't reattach the toe arm. Because <laughs> you'll never get that shit off with the toe arm still on. You could do that, you could pull the axle, but that seems a lot harder. But that is always an option. <laughs> Disconnect the upper control arm. You may have to use some violence on these bolts. Once the old arm is out, you can install the new one and dial out all of that negative camber or get you that stance boy life. Just the tip. What is it called? Just the tip. <sighs> when you're installing arms on the knuckle side, don't over tighten them if your car is lowered. Just snug them up because when the car drops, it will tighten that up. And if it's over tightened, it will uh, it'll compress and it won't move freely. So currently what is happening is uh, we are aligning the S13 because we were up till 2 o'clock in the morning today, I guess technically, uh, putting control arms in and that was crooked as f So it's getting aligned by this fine gentleman. Just lining it up because it's crooked and I'm going to show you what happens when you have solid motor mounts on your car. When you have solid motor mounts, all of this stuff, this stuff, and this stuff, and this stuff, all falls out. Promise me, promise me that we're gonna clean this up one day, please. One day. Soon. 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 Not next week. <laughs> there, there are more important things. <laughs> Drifting has to happen. Now he wins. <laughs> That's your new lower third. Daddy. Galen, Daddy wins. Well, we're doing the front end alignment, adjusting caster. But uh, these are in and they all work. We put in this fancy new sway bar. Uh, this is a sway bar out of a JDM 180SX, which is 19 millimeters, uh, instead of this stupid yellow noodle, which is 11 millimeters, which doesn't do anything. This does stuff and it makes it more good. More better. Mo better. More better than water. I made a rookie mistake when I. Well, I forgot to realign them, to reset these, but what a lot of guys do when they install just wires like these is they make them equal, equal measurement from side to side. Um, so they'll like measure against the stock one and pick like a quarter inch of adjustment, make them both, make these both a quarter inch longer or shorter over stock and think it's good to go. These cars are so old and crooked now that, you know, you might measure even from here to here, but when you measure the wheel to a body line in the car that's the same from side to side, it ends up being that your actual, um, not track, not track line, but your wheel base, or your, your caster is only because of that. So this wheel, right, this is the one that was making contact with your, yes. with your former fender. Yep. Um, and probably, you know, when things are uneven length like that, from side to side, your car starts to basically do what it wants and it drives you instead. Yes. They do do that. You can have things like your camber uneven, um, a little bit of toe out of, out of spec, but on unequal length in the arms, especially ones that go uh, four and a half and make your car handle like crazy. So don't do that. Always make sure you get it aligned when you get that big install it. Or you end up driving like, driving like a dirt car. Left turns only. <laughs> Junior Nation spec. 
Junior. Is it? Is he retiring? Uh, you know what? I think his last. I think this is his last season. Is this is his, his last, last season. Last season, last race. Ju season. Junior Nation is over. That's right, NASCAR. He sucked. He sucked. He wrote his daddy's fame. Okay. Damn. Come see me. <laughs> Go. The shop address is online. <laughs> not the most accurate. Start there and dial in later. Over. At, at this point, it being both sides even is more important than what the caster measurement actually is. All right, so right now I'm like basically almost at the limit of the stock issue right here. That's good. I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get it where I want it, but it's just not happy with me. Um, the adjustment I have, if you measure, if you look, I'll spin the nuts. And we'll see how off it is. I'm really hoping these tension rod boxes aren't that f***ed. I'm actually thinking they are. That's at least, I don't know, an inch and a quarter, maybe a little less. On this side, way less adjustment in it. And this is still considerably closer to the bulkhead. See? She's doing the thing. I went to the wrong one. I did it to myself. <laughs> Played yourself. Congratulations. <laughs> DJ Khaled! <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself. Oh, it would have been great if you went to the, the wrong I, one again. I, I, I'm really off. Another one! <laughs> <laughs> So this is this is the thing that happens when uh, this one is still here. You you solid solid mount your car. Uh, that doesn't move, and that does. If you can stay with some sort of like rubber or even a hard plastic motor mount bushing and transmission bushing, try and stay that route, especially for a car that sees street use, because every single all the vibration from the motor. Start and stop, going through the revs, um, puddles, and just the cars will rattle themselves to pieces. Uh, but it had to be solid in this particular instance because this touches this, and then this breaks and all the oil comes out. I don't ever think we've done rack bushings in this amount. The only saving grace. Ah, uh, yes, I did. You did? You did poly? These are, uh, yeah. Oh, thank God. Holly bushings. Holly is usually fine, but these ones, these, uh, what is it, energy suspension yep, ones? Yep, energy suspension. These are actually pretty firm. Um, the only ones firmer than that are the Powered by Max ones, um, in which the guys try to tighten the brackets down all the way, and they end up crushing the aluminum body of the steering rack. Because there's supposed to be a little bit of a gap with the washer, I guess, because they don't want it to crush it. The guys are like, this doesn't fit like this, and then they just, they, they do the full retard thing. Impact like, gun, bro! Which is like 90% of cars anyways. Everything, the torque to spec on an S13 is th two DeWalt Dakadakas. Just everything, make everything two Dakadakas. All right, so the rack needs to be recentered. So when you're recentering the steering rack on an S13, there's actually a little like recession here into the rack body. Don't measure from out here. Um, because what a lot of guys do is they take out their some stop washers, or like rubber bump stops that sit in here to keep it flush, so to speak. Uh, a lot of guys take that out because you'll pick up another 10 mil of travel in the rack, um, but you have to recenter it. So it'll be offset looking from end to end, but that amount of travel is equal from side to side. It needs to be three inches. That appears to be three inches to my eye. This is a very important tip. Right now, we're gonna lower wait, this. Wait, wait. Is this 
Adjust the tip, tech tip. This is adjust the tip, tech tip. Okay, got it. Jesus, thank the Lord. Would you consider this aligned? F no. <laughs> Jesus, when you've met Coke Jesus, you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> Coke Jesus! Coca-Cola, bitches. Coca-Cola.